Hello. Um, so I do have a, a, sorry, my, it's been, uh, I don't, <laughs> I, I don't know how it, it is for you, Parth and, and Ben, but ever since we got the jump cloud thing, I get like logged out of almost all my accounts, like every couple of days. <laughs> um, that's, that's security as intended, right? Yeah. Um, so a lot of times I get like, I get sidetracked. Um, uh, but one of the things to add on to the meeting notes and actually I realized it, is it, oh, that's weird. Um, I'll add something to the, as a, um, here as well. Never mind. All right. Uh, I think we uh, should get started. Um, I can get described today. Um, okay, first thing on. Okay. Let's put still putting stuff on, so I'll give it a bit. Uh, anything you want to chat about, add them to the meeting notes. Cool. Um, I just want to say hello. I'm Tobias, and I'm here to learn a bit more about you. Cool. Welcome, Tobias. Um, can you share a little bit on, like, what, what you're working on, what, what particularly you're trying to do? Uh, so I'm a security economics researcher who's um, building um, a tool to identify risks and as well as I'm interested in uh, yeah, what the work team is doing and where you're at. Nothing awesome. particular, maybe like how you're or your plans to like make a UI or like integrate like different backend sources and whatnot. What is this looking like? That would be interesting to me, but yeah, I'm just going to be a fly on the wall. If that's cool. Yeah, that kind of bias. Thanks. Uh, we also have another new person on the call, Carla, if you want to introduce yourself, feel free to. Oh, no. That's cool. Um, let's go ahead with today's um, agenda items. Kodak opens. Um, what was this one again? This is a recurring thing. I, <laughs> I don't know what Kodak opens. Uh. Oh, um, okay. I think I know what this is. So, I forgot to, to add, um, this is the LF, mean, uh, LF meeting 
for the OpenSSF antitrust laws apply. And also um, there's a code of conduct. So in general, if you want more information, go to the OpenSSF website and the GitHub repo. Um, all right, Ben, you have the first item. Do you want to go ahead? Yeah, um, so this is basically just a, a quick check to make sure everyone's okay with um, their LF has an insights platform that allows us to um, do some polling of GitHub and basically pre prevent, pre present, not prevent um, community statistics and things like that. Um, there's staff at OpenSSF who can um, go in and do the GitHub integration side, uh, but I just wanted to, you know, in the interests of, uh, you know, open governance, make sure the maintainers were cool with him doing that instead of just having saying, yes, please go ahead and do it. Um, so it's mostly a like, hey, let me know if you object. Um, it's basically just enabling a, um, like a, a extension or plugin or something kind of thing. Um, there's information in the docs, but. Do we know how, how healthy we are with the checks? Do we have to fix up things um, so that we, we kind of at least meet the system bar? Well, so that's part of what we're trying to, you know, be able to get measurements for. Um, there are other sites um, outside of the LF platform that can do some things um, like cauldron.io. Um, I haven't had a chance to dig into that data yet, um, but there'll be more on that uh, and probably probably late next week or the week after is so I'll be out for uh, about a week. Um, but it can it'll give us things in terms of like, you know, number of contributors and um, uh, an overview of like how quickly we're closing issues and PRs and things like that. So that's one of the things that um, I want to start keeping better track of and staying on top of. Awesome. This sounds good to me. Mike, you have a hand up? Jeff. Yeah, no, it sounds good to me as well. Um, uh, it is somewhat on the inverted side, but and it's still early on, but there's some discussions within the LF. Uh, so not just to have Quark, in LFX, but to Guac itself be potentially a data provider for LFX for for um, companies. So like, hey, like, you know, different companies that are uh, not uh, projects, I should say. So different projects that come in and, you know, also with their SBOM or whatever, uh, those SBOMs could go into a Guac and that Guac could be then queried by LFX to then provide um, details to folks about stuff like, you know, license and, and, and vulnerability stuff. But that stuff is like way, way early on. So I just wanted to um, throw that out there because I think there might be some interest starting in the fall to start doing a POC around that. Um, and I'll keep folks, uh, you know, um, one of the takeaways from the Cloud Native Security Con is to try and get folks uh, uh, to start exploring that. So I'll, I'll um, probably set up some calls with uh, LF and, and, and us on uh, the maintainers all around some of that. Uh, Jeff. Yeah, can you hear me okay? I had a new, yeah. new headset. Okay. Um, yeah, my main question is, I, I think the concern is, do we want to add, you know, we have our own org. We, as the maintainers, like we uh, earn the right to have, you know, admin or, or write access to the org and the repo by the con contributor ladder. Like, do we want to just add Bennett just to get this thing done? Or is there something we could do ourselves to have it put there? Um, is the question right? And I mean, I'm supportive of just taking all the help, you know, that somebody's willing to provide. But we probably need to keep track of this in some way, um, you know, that like essentially, you know, we've added somebody that's not a maintainer for for whatever reason. Maybe we should audit it or or, or take them off at some point. I, I don't know how it works, but does, um, I mean, now that GitHub lets you have multiple organizations that you can connect to, right? Um, but uh, I think I agree. Maybe we can.
would this be sufficient to kind of like open the issue and have have it be something that we 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 look at again in like a month or so? We just have a ongoing action item to to review the permissions from the um, for ban um, banner. Yeah, I don't. I think we don't necessarily have to do it every month or every quarter, but maybe like if we have a a markdown file somewhere with a list or something like that. And maybe, I mean, maybe that maybe not. Like I mean, we can go and and look at the permissions at any time. But I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud here. Like. Yeah, where, I, where should we, we check? I, I don't think we have to. It, I maybe Ben can, can clarify this. I don't think the intention is to give them something permanently, right? This is just like temporarily so they can set up all the bots and stuff like that. Yeah, that's right. Like, it's basically just to enable this particular thing. Okay. Yeah, so. Um... This is something that is like fairly like it's a big thing in the open SF is like we don't want to have, you know, because right LF staff itself, it could also be there, you know, um, take a step back. Any of us could be threat actors. Uh, LF could be a threat actor, um, even if it's like uh, benign, right? Even if it's like an inadvertent, like uh, one of us could inadvertently set something up in the, the who are maintainers and, and um, our admins in the GitHub org, we could inadvertently. Um, uh, 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 make a mistake here. Um, and um, the idea behind some of this, so one is um, we would only be giving them temporary access. And so the idea is like we can, you know, if, if we needed to, the maintainers can kind of say, okay, great. We're going to keep an eye on what changes they make to make sure that, that nothing kind of comes in uh, that's bad. And then the other thing is, um, from my understanding, all the LFX stuff that is coming in, who that that would be enabled, are um, they're read only, um, and we can probably audit that as well. But yeah, I think that you know it, it is probably valuable for us to just make sure that we have that sort of process. Does that does that make sense, Jeff? Yeah, it makes sense to me. So, um, I guess. So for this, in this instance, how are we going to add Bennett and how are we going to, you know, in, in, uh, follow up that it's a temporary thing? Well, I mean, the, 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 the easy bit of it is just one of us would add them. And then um, after the engagement, we, you know, like we, we can say, hey, look, uh, we'll give it them access for um, like figure out how long this is going to take um, from, from, you know, uh, Bennett's perspective. So let's say, Oh, hey, you know, if you could give me access for three days or whatever, just so that I can get everything set up and it shouldn't take longer than three days, but, you know, whatever. Um, and then say, OK, great. Once it's been removed, we can maybe I, I don't know if we want to maybe add like a GitHub issue or something like that to track it. Um, I, but we just, can do that. I'll just have a calendar invite on everyone's calendar to be like, yeah, I've got to check this. Uh, does, it, does it sound OK, at least for this instance? OK, Jeff has to. Tick. Um, Half. Any thoughts on this? Yes. No. Any final objections? Okay. Um, so the position is. I can. So Ben, if you can let us know how long Ben needs it, and then maybe uh, just ping me. I can give him access, or ping one of us, and then. Whoever gets that um, that request can create a calendar invite for us to to check back in maybe one two weeks. All right, sounds good. Thanks, Ben. Is there some part about documenting a process or other that security F and open source projects can maybe like learn from, or how you end up answering the question, who's like short term, long term, medium term maintainer. Yeah, I think this is an in interesting one. I, my 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 take on it is, um, if we see it more than three times, then we'll create a process. <laughs> no, I think it's a one-off thing. 
w w with that said, I will. So as a as a member of the the OpenSF TAC, I will be actually keeping an eye on on kind of what's happening here because multiple other projects are looking to do similar sorts of things, and each project right largely has its own ability to to sort of maintain um, uh, uh, all this. Um, and uh, I think the thing that we're looking to figure out, and as an OpenSSF TAC member, we're trying to kind of say, hey, in the future, um, it's not just going to be Glock. There's going to be, you know, Scorecard might try to do something like this, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, and, and how can we do this in an efficient way? Uh, uh, yes, yes. That and maybe we can even open that up as a, as a GitHub uh, ticket, right? Like, hey, can we give like temporary admin to somebody? Um, in addition uh, to what, what Jeff said is, yeah, so most other projects um, is owned by the OpenSSF org itself, which, you know, uh, but in fact, actually, they're trying to move away from that if possible, because as ideally, the LF wants different projects to just sort of maintain how they want to do it. And then the only reason why LF staff would come in is in cases of like a break glass, like, oh my gosh, somebody's credentials got stolen and somebody went in and started deleting all the repos or, or somebody's gone malicious or somebody has reported a pretty serious violation of code of conduct and we need to remove their access. That is the time when they would come in and, um, you know, take that over because all of these orgs are underneath the, the GitHub enterprise umbrella. Um, uh, that that the OpenSSF runs. So technically, they could become an, an admin just on their own, but they don't want to do that, right? They want to um, essentially give autonomy to us to run the project. And then in the cases where, hey, we need some additional things because it is like we want to install an app that we don't have access to or we or we want to install an app that might cost the LF money, um, that's when we would that, that's when they would come in and, and do some of that. Uh, Brendan. Yeah, so I, I think we have a good idea on what we are doing for now. I think we agreed. Um, uh, one of the points that I wanted to to bring about on the side point where like what metrics into LFX. Um, I managed to to chat to Chris a, a little bit about this at Cloud Security Con. Uh, I think the desire is to at least like boil this down to something simple. So. I'm not sure how we want to frame it, but I think the, the thing that he was looking at is like, oh, can we specifically say about all oh, this one metric? Maybe we can call it like Glocks and Glock dash something, like Glock dash scorecard, Glock dash some check, right? But I, I think the um, the desire there is to abstract it into something that's like more simplified that, oh, we're going to put Glock in and then we're going to kind of like try and integrate LFX with what I prefer. I think that was one of the concerns of the, uh, that it may be a bit, become a bit complicated. And, and wait, curious, wait, is that from the perspective of um, LFX metrics for Guac or Guac for LFX metrics? Guac for LFX metrics. Ah, ah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, and, and, and um, on that end, uh, yes, there's the simplified bit, but there's also, um, and I know we've had this discussion, and and uh, Jeff and some of the other folks from OpenS uh, from uh, LF are gonna, um, they're doing a bit more exploration, but they they seem interested in potentially using um, Guac, uh, and I know it's not a topic, so I don't want to go too deep on this, but but uh, around using um, uh, using Guac if possible as a for both license stuff as well as vulnerability stuff inside of just sort of more generically cncf at least um and then that might go broader but the the idea there being that we could um help out uh you know um do the identifying license issues across multiple projects and stuff like that and and mm -hmm. same thing with vulnerabilities but but once again that's still very early on we would need to i think sit down with them um and help them out a little bit there um but they, they, but there is interest there awesome um okay let's move on um 
talking about strong content is security con mike myself and uh, toddy met up um toddy from microsoft met up to talk a little bit about the use cases um they did kind of bring bring back up this idea of like we want to be able to they have a vulnerability scanner that like scans deployments uh, like runtime right so to get a vulnerability to say this vulnerability is in this cluster um in this kubernetes cluster now the the trouble that they have is like they don't know where this container comes from and so i think that's the tricky part into um figuring it out right so there are several mutations that go into this the containers get built um step two is helm charts uh, those containers get used in a helm chart uh, and then the other step is then those helm charts get deployed to some kind of like GitOps process and finally the things that are running um how do they like if I find out a vulnerable container, how do I know which Helm chart it belongs to? Right? Because it could like, let's say Nginx, I'm sure like a thousand different Helm charts use Nginx. Which version is it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I think that was an interesting discussion. Uh, one of the, one of the things we talked about is like how do we encode the information from the Helm charts in, um, also another discussion we had is like what fits what fits where, right? Like where in the life cycle do we say that something is no longer um, should should not be part of guac based on or like the guac has its sense of day, for example, runtime, uh where things are constantly changing. Um but you know, helm chart helm chart information maybe that should be part of guac. Um Maybe there are some attestations that, or some analysis that we can do, to kind of figure out which containers uh, map to which, which Helm charts. Uh, but then again, I think that's part of the, the the supply chain process of which, basically, you're asking for S bomb for Helm charts, right? So maybe Helm charts should have S bombs. <laughs> um, but that I think that that was that was to me what was interesting. Um, we did talk a little bit about the drift problem between like, oh, whatever I deploy and whatever it's run is kind of maybe different. Uh, I think that my argument was that they should be eventually consistent. And if they're not, someone should like, basically if something's wrong, someone should be fixing it. <laughs> so it should eventually be correct. And so my take on it is like, if you see a particular behavior in the deployment and that deployment is pers that, that, uh, that definition of desired state is persistent for maybe multiple days, then you can be fairly certain that it is in runtime. So having like temporary setbacks or temporary, um, uh, moments of drift is, is, is fine. So deployments should deployment information should be sufficient to kind of have a good estimation of, of what's running in the runtime. Um, yeah, so that, that was a conversation with, with them. Um, so um, what's going to be the outcome? Are they going to keep, are they going to, you know, there was an issue that got created by whatever Dwan. Like, are we going to keep talking about this? Like, is there going to be some work done? Because I think it's a good idea, right? Deployment, I think, makes a lot more sense than runtime tracking, obviously. But yeah, what should that node look like? What information does? What information needs to be captured right, from Helm charts or whatever else it is? Yeah. All that kind of stuff. I think is is it like should we have a recurring Microsoft, you know, Toddy and the rest of the team meeting with them, like you know, like biweekly or whatever it is, and then like let's get some actual work done. Or like what's what's the outcome? Yeah, so he uh, Toddy mentioned that um, Alex and Redwan are kind of like the two folks that are pretty much as their focus. Um, so we should probably set up a regular meeting with 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 them. Uh, I know they are also working on the AID stuff, which which probably is talk about. Um, but yeah, I think that the 
that's a good suggestion. I think we should have a a regular meeting with them to kind of follow up on these these topics. Um, because because I feel like if we don't if we don't keep the conversation going, it's just going to be a conversation forever. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think um, there needs to be like a working group or some kind of an action that happens uh, so that like it actually moves forward instead of just like, oh yeah, we want to do this. And then next KubeCon or whatever comes around, it's like, yeah, let's, we still want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> I can not think the action I didn't schedule that. Uh, Mike? Yeah, I, I do want to make sure, and and I know that you know we've we've had this discussion with them um, before, but I think we want to really make sure here that it's not just the ma the, the Guac maintainers necessarily doing all of the work, right? We want to make sure that the this is like um, we need the contributions back because all of us have have enough on our plates. I think. Um, all right, let me take up the action item too. Oops. Um, Oh. Definitely, like the help chart as bomb should be an interesting one. Maybe there's something that, that we can look into. I, I don't think we've, at least I haven't looked into what as bomb for helm chart looks like. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but that could be an interesting one. Um, all right. Next item, Mike, you have one on AI, Quark, Quark AI Molly. No, no. So this is, uh, well, this is a slightly different. Um, but I, I remember, and, and so I know that uh, uh, Mihai isn't here. He, he'd be probably the perfect person to, to chat about with this. But I remember a while back, um, we had talked about, you know, there's probably the opportunity as... Um, we get large data sets into something like a, a guac, you could potentially train those data sets um, to to understand things like, uh, you know, the, the shape of this supply chain it has a similar shape to malicious supply chains or, or vulnerable supply chains um, and those sorts of things. Um, so I spoke to somebody out in Cloud Data Security Con, um, Zara Admet Post, who uh, I'm, I met her originally in Japan, but she is um, she works at DigitalOcean, but she's also a, a professor of AI at, um, I believe, University of Arizona. Um, and she was talking about how actually she, she is very familiar with sort of the network AI or AI network. I, I'm not an AI expert, so I don't, I don't know any of this sort of stuff. But I spoke to her about maybe um, setting up a call in the next few weeks just to kind of say, hey, is there like an opportunity here. And she also brought up that there might be, depending on interest, um, there might be students who are interested in poking around with Guac, trying to load it with data, and then trying to train um, stuff off of it. Uh, but once again, that's just, um, you know, uh, just wanted to throw that out there as, as something that seemed potentially interesting. And in the very least, I'm sure she can point us in the right direction of like, things to explore. <laughs> Yeah, I think that would be cool. Um, so recently, um, well, actually last week, Marco and I were looking at some some data that we, we have um, internally around, we basically took the equivalent of the end of OpenSSF package analysis um, list, basically all the malware. Um, map them to package URLs and then find a bunch of um, a, a bunch of S bombs that contain those those malicious package URLs. Uh, granted a lot of them were false positives because there's a bunch of typo squatted packages that VS code uses uses a package of JSON to define but they're not actually real NPM packages. Um, so but this was interesting because I think we, and Marco can correct me here, I, I think we had like a lot of like software like identifiers. We had like maybe about 30K or something like that. And like manually, 
I kind of like went through it and tried to be like, oh, this this string appears everywhere. <laughs> so this is like one group of software. This is another group of software. I think like there could be an interesting application or AI idea where AI helps you understand the groupings of software that you have just based on the shape. Yeah, definitely. I, I think this gets to the issue of um, like uh, of applying groupings at different levels. Um, like a lot of metadata is associated to artifacts, um, but like artifacts can have um, not like names that aren't useful when you want to look at things from a higher level, like of a, like say a system or of a or even a product. Um, and yeah, as Brennan said, we were thinking, we were wondering if uh, like some type of model could uh, could be like a classification model could could be used to to do that grouping um, for you. Yeah, I think it would be also like really cool. You can pull off that with like, here's a grouping on software and this software is being owned by this particular group of people. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. Cool. Um, um, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to go into the next thing, but do you have anything else on? Uh, wait one second here. Um, so uh, before we get to the, the yeah, I guess the, the open PRs and that sort of stuff, I just wanted to throw just a, uh, a, a shout out. Um, we got multiple shout outs. At, we got, <laughs> uh, okay, great. Uh, we got multiple shout outs at um, Cloud Native Security Con in the keynotes, um, which was pretty cool. So uh, 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 just real quickly, um, um, Marina Moore gave a, a keynote um, and I didn't get actually get to see the keynotes because I was stuck at the booth, um, but uh, she gave a shout out uh, to Guac and a bunch of the other projects just generally in the cybersecurity and, and, and uh, supply chain security space. Um, in addition to that, uh, Perco, for folks who know him or uh, Adolfo, um, gave also another shout out to Guac in his keynote uh, about um, uh, VEX and about how like, you know, different tools are ingesting VEX and doing analysis on it like Guac. Um, so there was a couple of shout outs uh, uh, there. And then there was also uh, a few talks on, on Guac at, out at um, Cloud Native Security Con, or at least that involved Guac. Uh, and in addition to that, um, I will say that we actually, you know, and Jeff, uh, you, you were um, handling the booth much more than I was, but it did seem like we got a reasonable amount of folks who were very, in the very least, familiar with Guac. Um, they not, not weren't necessarily using it, but they were like, oh, I've been told I need to take a look at this. Um, and, and so anyway, just wanted to say, you know, the popularity grows. <laughs> yeah, I think in the, um, Harry talked about it too in the open AI day, the day before. Oh, yes. So we had a number of people come by and ask about it. Um, be like, oh, I heard about it yesterday. <laughs> so that was cool. I'm trying to do Mike's Badoon thing and figure it out. <laughs> this is super cool, though. Um, did anyone manage to go to the top that mentioned Guac in the title? I'll probably have to go take a look at that offline. I thought Mike did. At least we got a picture. <laughs> Awesome. That's that's super cool. Um, okay, review open PRs. Um, let me share my screen here. Okay. And this one needs review. Did you just reply to me there, Parf? Uh, yes. Yeah. Basically, it's a fake. <laughs> okay. Made that up just to capture use case, to capture every kind of use case. 
yeah, it's not, it's not a valid SBOM. I just modified it for my use case. Okay, I think there's a couple things missing, so I'll, I'll comment on the, okay. the SBOM itself and say kind okay. of what we should have, and then I think that might be a sounds couple good. changes there. Okay, that sounds good. So we discussed this last time. Um, I think the response for this uh, was that yeah, we chat about this offline. I think the response to this is that yes, we want a a distress image mm -hmm. or like a trim down minimal image, but we want something where we would be able to kind of reproduce a build from someone's hash in which the Jenga images don't have the ability to have that. Yeah, static image. Is that is that still the the going the going uh, consensus around that? Yeah, uh, I found the actual the original static image at some point. Um, I can paste that there as well. Um, will you pay, do you paste the... Jeff, do you said you, you found the image that we could use? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, you want me to paste in the notes? Um, yeah. Or do you want me to reply? Oh, you can reply. Um, okay. Um, before we go forward, the uh, so for Cyclone DX or for the legal stuff, I'm also working on another PR. Uh, I, we'll, uh, we'll see if I get it out this week. Probably not. Uh, I'm working on the this clearly defined certifier also. Um, so that in that case, I'm going to create this NFY. I'm going to create like a again a fake in total attestation for the time being. I don't know if we want to formalize it later on, um, how we want to go about it, but I'm just going to kind of similar to what we did for vulnerabilities. Like in total attestations currently has a, a vulnerabilities attestation that's still, there's still an open PR for that's being finalized. So I think once that gets adopted, we can you know, trans, trans, uh, you know, transfer or use the, you know, the officially official one from the in total attestations repo, but for licenses and stuff like that, nothing currently exists. So for now, I'm just going to keep it simple. And I'm just like basically using the clearly defined whatever it outputs as the predicate itself. Um, and then we can 
you know, you can go, you can change it in the future if you want to. Uh, but I think that's, that's, I think that's okay for now, uh, as a good starting point. So, uh, so yeah, it's going to be a certifier. Um, and I'm asking, I was asking, um, oh man, I always blank his name. Uh, Jeff, what's this guy's name again? Nick, Nick. Nick, yeah, Nick Vidal, uh, from the, uh, you know, the clear defined, he's like one of the maintainers. How do we actually... And, 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 you know, Jeff wrote up the design doc, so I'm kind of following the design doc, you know, his, his, his guide for there. But there's there's coordinates also. Um, like, how do you map Parl to coordinates? And so he hasn't responded. He, you know, I, I messaged him again as a follow-up, like, hey, what's, how should they do this? Um, so I'm waiting for his feedback on that. But in the meantime, I think loosely they should map. Based on like based on some some testing that I did, um, I the provider seems a little vague, so I think I would probably want some help in terms of what the provider should be because the provider doesn't actually appear on the Perl. So we might have to like, create like a mapping of like if you see this, then the provider is this, right? Based on the type, basically. Um, so the so we're working through all that stuff, but so far um, so far so good, I think. I'm at the I'm at the stage where I can create the parser now. So it's moving along. So I have a question on on that. Um, mm -hmm. Is are the licenses expected to kind of change and be updated? Like, what is the is it by version? Is it just by the path or? Yeah. So there's two. There's two. Well, actually, there's a number of situations where a license would be updated. It's by version. So the, the bits that are being analyzed never change, right? Um, the, the first reason is because it, it kind of runs scans um, asynchronously. So the first time you request a, light, a, a package, it doesn't exist in the database, and it will kick off a scan in the background. So it'll actually give you a result of like no assertion. And then later, when you run, uh, when, you, when you query it again, it'll, it'll give you the real results. Um, there's a number of tools that run like um, scan code, licensee, and potentially other new tools. Um, those tools can get updated and then rerun later with a new version, which might have better results. Um, and then the, the last reason is the clearly defined community actually has lawyers and paralegals that look at uh, scan results and see if they're wrong and manually correct them through a peer reviewed process. Um, so that can result in like a higher quality after um, something has changed uh, based to, due to like a, a manual review. Um, so for all those reasons, we want to be able to, similar to like OSV and new vulnerabilities coming out, we want to kind of check clearly defined every so often and update our, the license information in Guac based on what's there. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that, that, that's, that's good information. Searching for has as bombs where artifacts in Gaon CLI. Yeah, I think this is one of the uh, way I think it's there uh, issues. Is you know what? Like I think based on the recommendation, we decided now we should uh, has as bomb should default to artifact. The artifact is there, right? Otherwise, yeah. otherwise use package. Before it was the opposite. Um, so now he has the vulnerability CLI can take in an artifact also now. So let's say you, you specify an artifact, um, then it's going to go in and, and pull out the vulnerabilities. Uh, it's going to find the SBOM if it's attached to the art artifact. If it's not attached to the artifact, it's going to look, look, go look at the package and so forth. And vice versa, package to uh, package to artifact also. Oh, I can review this. Yeah. Oh, and then this last, I... yeah, this last one was the, oh yeah, I talk about like yeah we want to use the API uh, instead of the or map it to the API instead of the actual repo, and not use the actual scorecard runner, so.
I'm somehow hung up on why this changed. <laughs> oh, he created okay. He created the space in between. Um, so does this remove dependency on the scorecard CLI to be part of the the uh, the image? Because that's uh, you mean like the direct direct dependency on? Uh, I think last time. I can't remember we when the, whether we ended up fixing that, but like last time we we had it so that um, the scorecard certifier would require um, the scorecard certifier require the the CLI to be present. Which CLI? The scorecard CLI. Oh really? Uh, but maybe remove that. So I, I I'm not uh, sure about that. Okay. Why is this touching so many things? This doesn't seem right. This probably should just be in contact. Yeah. Yeah, that should probably go into the initialization of the scorecard itself. Yeah. 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 So we have to review it. Um, and then 1789 is another one that's been open for a long time. Um, Oops, but 179? 179, yeah. Oops, sorry, 1789. You forgot the eight. There you go. The problem with this one, and I have it as part of the appending open issues, uh, we can chat about it later, uh, I'll, I'll leave some time for later. But the issue with this is now it, because we're doing, because Cyclone DX gives you a version range back for VEX in, in order to determine what falls within the version range within Guac, right? We have to now query Guac in the ingester, which is not ideal. <laughs> so, oh, I see. So we, I, I don't like this. Um, so I think that's why this, this PR has been sitting open for such a long time. It's like, I, I think we, I wanted to discuss, <laughs> we should probably find better, figure out a better way to do this. I don't, I feel like the ingester should not be reading at the same time writing. Right. I think we should have the, have it figured out beforehand somehow. And then ingester just writes it. So I think this gets fixed by our software identity identifier fix that we want to eventually go oh, yeah? through with, right? But like I, I for now mm. So this is This is for you say it's only DX back. Yeah, second one DX backs. So it provides you, you a version range. But that's not what Vex does, right? Wait, I'm so confused. <laughs> Vex can specify. It shouldn't, right? Because like a Vex statement is saying that this particular software isn't affected. But then again, I'm not surprised if people are using it. That's in, true. In ways. Um, that can... <laughs> yeah, let, let's let's talk about this next time. Uh, I'll I'll get more information exactly. It's been a while since I looked at it too. Um, but yeah. We can take a yeah. talk about it later. It's it's an open item. In our, I in our like community. I I think like it's it's yeah, to me so right it could there. be it could be yeah to me it so could click be on that. which one? click on that example right there so four fifty one oh, it yeah. says yeah click on that I want to see what the example was here. Yeah, so affected, sorry, affected is going to give you a version range. FX. Uh, wait, wait, okay, so this ID, CV. Well, I don't care about this anymore. I think we, we just tossed this out. Oh, because, because we get it from all OSD I care is, anyways. It's is this, yeah. <laughs> I care, but, but it's I, exploitable and I will not fix it. <laughs> Empty something. But you need to know what it applies to, right? You don't have that well, information. What it applies see. to should be 
Okay, so this is Vex. This is um, that's the package information. This is wait, hold on. Okay, maybe this. Okay, so this is the product product IDs. Yeah, it is. Okay, so what this is saying is that this affects this URL. Right. Uh, I mean, maybe we still don't need it because I guess our because technically in the graph we should have this right. If we, if there's a CVE, we should know these. This product is affected because we have the SBOM for it, which contains that vulnerable component. Yeah. So it should already be mapped. But like, okay, that these are the versions that are, so this, this product is affected. Because at so this point, you know, product ABC, we need the SBOM for. Yeah, so it, it's kind of, hmm. Yeah, I mean, just I don't, you can, we don't have to take up the whole time. We can chat about it maybe uh, next time or something or offline. Uh, but yeah, I, this I, is something that's been sitting there for a while. I think my off the cuff response is that like we can. What I have, what I'm thinking about now is like kind of similar to. Uh, we put. the information about the facts on kind of like the the root node of the empty version and then a certifier could go and tag out those things which kind of fits into the same mm, uh, into the same process of what we're thinking with the identifiers as well I mean, it doesn't have to be the certifier, right? It could just be done post process, like at the client side. You get the you get the vex back. You're like, okay, now I give me all the packages, and then you determine what falls within the range. We mean on the client side of of who, of the ingester. No, no, no. Of like, the thing asking for vex information. Whatever yeah. is whatever is yeah. using VEX. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah, it, it just it it does the calculation, all right? Like, yeah, this these you know like it gets all it gets all the versions for what, whatever the package is, and then yeah, based on the VEX information, I got and it just maps out. Okay, these are the versions that are affected. Yeah. Well. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because it, it kind of ties into the whole vulnerability CLI piece, right? So like, let's, for example, let's say the vulnerability CLI will handle that. And then it'll be like, okay, yeah, there is a VEX for the specific version for this vulnerability, right? It does the calculation and it gives you an output. It gives you an output that way. Okay. Because it, gonna, it, it's done, it did some post-process calculations, maybe. I'm going to attack Santiago in this. Um, where is it? Oops. Uh, So we don't. We still don't have an answer for this. Do we want to discuss this next week then? If yes, yes. Yeah. Um, how do we want to do this? Uh, it's it's already there. 
It's it's already there in the bottom. There's an opens. Oh, okay, that's very okay. If you scroll down, open pendings. Uh, keep going what? down. Keep going down. Oh, it's all the way down. Right here. Yeah. Oh no, no, you missed it. Go up. Go up. Go up. Right there. Open pendings. Oh, you missed it again. Oh. Okay. Keep that's... going. Up. Keep going up. No, no, no. Keep going up. There's already a list. It's on I'm page. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll bring it to the top. I'll bring it to the top. It'll make it easier. Oh so, wait, but that's that's in the previous meeting, right? So we had to create one for this meeting. Yeah, so here, I, uh -oh. I, I put it to the top. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Cool. Uh, all right, we have three minutes. Um, let's look at events, last issue. Which areas? Um, ben, could you maybe list kind of like the PRs and all those that you, you've added so that we can kind of tag that on? Yep, can do. Yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, so it just like makes it easier for us to to, to make a decision on this. Um, awesome. Sounds good. Um, I'll just add it here. As I go through this, I'll document in the contributing page that I'm working on how people can do it in the future using this as an example. So that way we have a little more of a repeatable process. Thank you. Awesome. I think we are just about time. Um, any final notes? Cool. See you all next week. Have a good um, 12th of July if you celebrate it. Thanks. See ya. Bye.